Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Native, the makers of vegan and cruelty-free deodorant that also is sulfate-free, paraben, and aluminum-free. And I'm excited to share with you something that Native has been working for almost two years on, and it is plastic-free packaging. The packaging is made from paperboard, and Native is committed to sourcing the materials from responsibly managed forests. Native is also a proud partner of 1% for the Planet, which commits 1% of the plastic-free sales to environmental nonprofits. Native also works. My husband has struggled with rashes but has no problem with Native. After a long run, he still smells great. It has a great texture too. It goes on smoothly, it dries quickly, and it's not sticky. And there are lots of lovely scents to choose from, including lilac and white tea, and tangerine and citrus blossom. But my husband's favorite scent is charcoal. I myself don't use deodorant. I mentioned this before in a previous video, but I have a variant of the ABCC11 allele that gives me dry earwax and also no body odor. It's very, very interesting science. My <laughs> sister-in-law introduced this to me. She is a geneticist and she told me about this and I was flabbergasted. Three plastic-free deodorants normally cost $39, but if you use my link down below, you can receive them for $25, which is 25% off. Free shipping is included. Big thanks to Native for sponsoring this video and for their continued support. Now today I'm going to be making a dessert that just sounds so lovely in its simplicity. It's ginger milk pudding or ginger milk curd. It contains only three ingredients, milk, ginger juice, and sugar. But somehow in that combination, naturally curdles the milk and solidifies it into a silky, luscious pudding-like consistency. No eggs, no starch, no thickeners, no anything, just ginger enzymes that cause the milk to coagulate. Science, again, science is so great. So not only do I wanna taste this beautifully simple dish, I want to witness this curdling action before my own eyes. <laughs> and I have lovely Sarah to thank for introducing me to this recipe. She provided a link to a Francis Lamb article that was written way back about 10 years ago in Salon. I'll put a link down below. Francis Lamb, of course, is the host of The Splendid Table, which I love listening to on the radio on the weekends. And this dish sounds so lovely. So as it often goes with simple recipes, they can be deceptively simple, meaning they are tricky. There's some sort of technique, there's some sort of process, some small little alteration that makes the recipe work. And I think this recipe is no exception. There are plenty of counts of the pudding not setting, not congealing. So I went on the internet and found a recipe that said fail proof. And I said, okay, let's do that. It's written by Red House Spice. I'll put a link down below to the original recipe and we're gonna follow that one. So let's do this. I think one of my chickens is laying an egg. Can you hear that? Either laying an egg or maybe she's warning her flock that there's a predator around. Maybe there's a hawk in a tree. At any rate, let's prepare the ginger. So I've got some fresh ginger here and to remove the skin, you can just take a spoon and just scrape it to get the peel off. Press all this juice out. So apparently this is a Cantonese dessert and originated from the Guangdong area of China. So these are typically made and served in rice bowls, but my rice bowls are a little bit small and my miso bowls have a nice dark color to them. So it'll be a nice contrast to the milk. So that's what I'm going to opt to use. So I need one tablespoon of ginger juice per bowl. Red House Spice says you also can do this in the microwave. As many Chinese desserts tend to be, this is going to be lightly sweetened. Two teaspoons per serving. Boop. I'm gonna stir the ginger juice and add the hot milk. Oops. <laughs> now I'm supposed to let this sit undisturbed for 10 minutes and it should coagulate. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's been a full 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and give our ginger milk puddings a peek. Mm-hmm. Lovelies, this did not work. I see some thickening, but definitely no 
no pudding this happening here. Alrighty, I consulted the internet and I came up with two potential problems. Number one, I stirred the ginger and the milk mixture. The recipe did say to stir the ginger juice, but it did not say to necessarily stir both of them together. I guess that disturbs the denaturing of the proteins. I'm going to increase the temperature by 10 degrees to 80 degrees centigrade because by the time we mix it in with the ginger juice, it will decrease the temperature immediately and we want it to be around 70 degrees. So I have enough milk to do one more bowl. So I really hope this works. 200 milliliters of milk. Two teaspoons of sugar. Apparently this reaction is supposed to be pretty immediate. We shall see. Alrighty, my lovelies, it's been a full 10 minutes and it looks like this one didn't coagulate either. <gasps> it did work, oh my gosh, it worked. Oh, not really. It thickened, but it's not a pudding. The milk is nice, it's very clean, kind of dairy. Oh, it did coagulate a bit, but I'm gonna taste it anyways. Here we go, itadakimasu. It's got a lovely ginger flavor. That's the first thing I taste. And at the end, you get kind of a spicy tingle at the end, almost peppery. The flavor of milk and ginger together is surprisingly delicious. It's a lemony yet zingy and it's warm. Lovelies, I am back with more milk. I am determined to make this recipe work. The milk that I got is whole milk, but it's not ultra pasteurized. I am not sure if that has anything to do with it, but to satisfy my curiosity, I'm gonna follow the recipe that I did before. Same thing, my last batch, same amounts, but with this milk. I'm also gonna try another version with dry milk powder. I watched a video by Magic Ingredients, I'll put the link down below, and they suggest adding this to make it even firmer. I'd rather not. I want it to work in its simple form, just with milk, sugar, and ginger juice, but, if this gives me a solidified pudding, then so be it. So let's do this. <laughs> Pop that in there. Two teaspoons of sugar. We don't want to boil. Okay, we're there. So 176. Not gonna stir it, just directly pour it. Now for the dry milk powder version, we're gonna add a quarter cup of non-fat milk powder and another 200 milliliters of milk, two teaspoons of sugar, same temperature. That additional quarter cup of milk powder increased our volume by a little bit. Alrighty lovelies, it's been 10 minutes and this is the result of the recipe I did with unultra pasteurized milk and it looks watery. And this is the one I did with non-fat milk powder and it too looks watery. A little bit more congealed. You can see that little bit of vibration. This should hold the weight of a spoon. Oh, it does, look at that. It's holding the weight of the spoon, but it should be much firmer. This should be like a tofu. And this is not. Again, it's runny. <laughs> so I just reviewed Magical Ingredients recipe. They use 330 grams of milk to two tablespoons of ginger juice that's divided between two bowls and one tablespoon of sugar. So I'm gonna make those changes and 330 milliliters or grams of whole milk, quarter cup, dry milk powder, one tablespoon sugar, 176. All right, we're gonna wait and see what happens. Lovelies, let's see how this batch turned out. I've gotten no gelling whatsoever. I have soup. Ooh, it does taste lovely though. Ginger milk, magical ingredients. Recipe though is a little bit sweeter. I like it. Mmm, it reminds me a bit of a bowl of Fruit Loops because it has that lemony sweetness along with milk, you know, cereal milk, but it's warm and it's got a little peppery finish. It's lovely. 
Lovelies, I'm back. It's day two of ginger milk pudding. I am determined to make this happen. I've come back with yet another recipe. I've watched several videos and I've got some more science. So first off, I'm going to be using a ceramic bowl, which is used in all the other videos and recipes I've seen. I wanted to use my miso bowls because frankly, I wanted a good photograph, but I have a hunch that the miso bowls allowed the heat to dissipate too quickly. So going to ceramic. I'm using a recipe that I found from Kaimos. I'll put a link down below. Kaimos org is a great blog where I learned all kinds of wonderful food science and they say the ideal temperature at which milk solidifies or coagulates is about 60 to 65 degrees C which is about 140 145 degrees F which is 10 degrees cooler than the first recipe I did and 20 degrees cooler than the second recipe which I didn't have any success with at all also, I learned from Kaimos that the active enzyme, the protease that's in the ginger, breaks down very quickly. So you must grate it fresh and use it very quickly, which I did with all the other recipes as well, but I'm going to be even more aware of it. I'm using some cloth here to squeeze every bit of that juice out, 18 grams. And this will let us get every little bit of juice out. 250 milliliters, 20 grams of sugar. 141, 142, okay. And here we are. And how do we look? Oh, it looks watery. <laughs> Come on, what am I doing wrong? Ooh, this one's much sweeter. But still, I failed yet again. Alrighty, so I'm gonna pop this into a seamer, cook it for 10 minutes, just see what happens. My thing might have happened, but at least I've tried. See you in a little bit. Okay, lovelies, it's been about 10 minutes since I steamed my ginger pudding or ginger milk. <laughs> 189, 190, that's plenty of heat for that to have coagulated and it has not changed at all. Still watery, still delicious. Smaller rice bowls, maybe that'll make a difference. I'm just gonna go back to the drawing board. I'm gonna do the original recipe that I did from the very, very beginning. Two teaspoons of sugar, 200 milliliters of milk. I've got a, I'm gonna heat up my bowls. There's an idea. I've got some leftover water for my steaming. I'm gonna heat it to 150 degrees. This is what Francis Lamb recommends. So that's what I'm gonna go with. What am I doing here? I am using different bowls, not using the miso bowls. I warm them up to keep the temperature. I didn't heat this too high. I kept this at about 150 degrees, which is still optimal for the milk coagulation curve. And uh, let's see. Nope. Let's just try it in the pot. 200, sugar, one, two teaspoons. Okay, ginger juice. Don't stir, don't disturb. And we're just gonna wait and see. I think we might've gotten some gelling. I actually got some gelling. Well, holy something or other. Yes, right there. And it happened right where the ginger touched the milk. In some of those videos that I saw, they, it looks like the complete texture of tofu. It's so firm. This is thickened and curd-like and definitely has coagulated, but still not as firm as what I've seen in some of those videos. And I don't know why. Apparently this was made originally with buffalo milk, which naturally has higher protein in it. Hi, I'm back. Fat-free milk, one more time. I'm gonna go to Kaimos's because he said to use fat-free milk. Here are the steps of all the gingers I've been using. I'm gonna grate a little of all of them so I can combine all their enzymatic properties in case there's variation in that. 250 milliliters of skim milk. No fat to interfere with the coagulation process. Okay, skim milk version. <gasps> Actually, I got some curds here. I have some thickening at least. I got curds to happen twice and that's good enough for me. Got to try this technique out and I got to learn a little bit more about ginger enzymes and its reaction to milk 
and I know the temperature at which milk proteins curdle at. So I did learn something here. If you want to attempt this, please do. Please report your findings. I really wanna know, especially if you have success, I wanna know all the details. You can contact me via social media, go to my website, let me know in the comments. I want the play-by-play. -play. It doesn't seem very complicated in the recipes and the videos and everything <laughs> I've watched, but somehow it is, and maybe that's why it's magic. Alrighty, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. And big thanks to Native for sponsoring this video. Three plastic-free deodorants normally cost $39, but if you click the link down below, you can get them for $25, which is 25% off the normal price, and you get free shipping. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Check out my website. I will include the recipe and my notes and my experience. And yeah, y'all take good care and I'll see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Ha ha ha!